Hi folks, welcome back to the deep dive. This is the complete and beer records video. It serves a number of purposes. Um, some folk are going to be arriving here just because they want the download sheet and the video description that's got all the chords listed out, uh, all the note, um, notes within each chord and all of the octaves and all of that stuff. So yeah, you can head on down there. Um, for folk that are doing the deep dive and continuing their learning, let's let's dive deeper. I'm going to give you three different approaches to um, completing the chords in your left hand or across, across the whole instrument. Um, each has got their own value. Some are more sort of uh, intellectual, um, practical or beautiful, like whichever suits you. You might like all three, as I do. Um, the first one is to get the sheets uh, below, in the, in the downloads below, and you'll see chord one contains notes one, three, and five. The root, third, and fifth. One, three, and five. And find them on your instrument. One, three, five, one, three, five. One, three, five, one. Oh, I missed that one there. Uh, and then say to yourself, oh, this is one, it's the root. Here's the three, so the third. And their fives are the fifth, and sort of noodle around with them a little bit. Nice. Um, that's a great thing to do. That's how I learn, and I haven't looked back. Any time you spend on it, um, yeah, it it, is, it brings reward. So totally recommend that as I do these other two approaches. So uh, and you go through each of the chords. You can pick a different chord a day, or a different chord a week, or whatever. Uh, second approach. This is a more practical approach. Um, you've got your left hand shapes from the left hand liberation uh, video. If you look at the chord sheet um, or your hand, you'll know that the chord contains one, threes and fives. And in the left hand, we were playing ones there and fives. And we just need to add one note to complete all those left hand liberation shapes to turn them into the complete chords. In this chord, it's note three. Um, so let me play that against my uh, note one in the right hand. Cool. So you can have a little go at that on day one or week one, whatever. And then, so we're not finding all the notes up here. We, we leave that for now. Um, we're just finding them in the left hand. And you add that extra note into your range of uh, choices, note choices each time you go around the song cycle and get to chord one, which appears only once in the song cycle. So you get loads of time to relax afterwards and some time to prepare and then have a little go at trying something new, relax and prepare. Um, and through doing that, you'll be sort of fine tuning. You'll be going like, oh, that didn't sound too nice. What if I try this? Oh, that sounded really nice. I want to do that again, that kind of thing. And you're going to build up your own internal language. Um, like I'm not going to demonstrate it, I need you to do that so that you can build your own sort of yeah vocabulary on the instrument. And it might be that you start doing things that sound totally inauthentic, but through doing them and then looking back to some traditional recordings, videos, um, you'll see and hear what's happening there and go, ah, oh, I know what they're doing differently to me because I've got that awareness now. So you can make better choices uh, through making your own mistakes you might come up with your own complete new flavour and be this a beer player that does things completely differently. Um, and, I mean, yeah, you, you're totally entitled to do that. So build your vocabulary by adding the single note to your shapes from left hand liberation in one of the chords and do it one chord at a time. So day one or week one, go for chord one. Day two or week two, we could go for chord two. Oops. Um, here I've got notes twos and sixes in the left hand. All I need to add, have a little think, help me out here guys. What notes are in chord two? The root is two. I'm already playing that. The third is four. And I was already playing the sixes. So I've got twos, fours and sixes now. Cool. Let's ignore chord three for a second. Uh, go to chord four. We're playing fours and ones, roots and fifths. It's roots and fifths. Uh, we're already playing roots and fifths in our note shapes for all of the chords in left hand liberation uh, note circles. Apart from chord six and seven, those ones we're playing roots and thirds, we need to add their fifths. 
So what is the third that we need to add to chord four? Notes are four, the root is four. The fifth is one, we've already got that down. The third is six, four. So you don't need to play circles anymore. Any style, whatever suits you. Cool. Uh, chord five. Oh. We had that big circle in the left hand. We need to add his third. What are the notes in chord five? We're already playing fives and twos, which are the root and the fifth. We need to add his third, which is seven. Cool. And then we get to chord six. This is one of the weird ones where we were playing roots and thirds. Root is six, third one, fifth is three. So we just add one note there. And seven, another one that we, where we need to add fifths. We're playing roots and thirds. The root is seven, the third is two, and the fifth is Four. Cool. So yeah, some of these additional notes are going to sound great in the song that you're already playing, some less so, and I want you to experience that. I don't want to make any suggestions as to which ones work and which ones don't, uh, and then it'll become part of your vocabulary. Nice one. So that's option two. Build up your, um, uh, pop the extra note into each of the chords one at a time, and each time you do it with one chord, explore it in the song structure and then by the end of like seven days or seven weeks or seven months you'll have um, all of the note options in the left hand available to you throughout the whole song structure. Awesome. Uh, next approach, approach three, the beautiful approach. So we need to have a quick look at chord three for this one. Uh, I'm going to tell you something fascinating about the, this approach and the song structure as well. Chord three. It's third is five, and it's fifth is seven. Threes, fives, and sevens. Awesome. So now we've got all seven chords in our hand, in the left hand. Uh, I want to present you with an idea and an approach. The chords contain the root, the third, and the fifth. Yep. Yeah. And if this was chord one, we'd have note one, three, and five. Yep. Yeah. If your first bit of practice was on chord one and your next bit of practice was on chord two, notes one, three, and five, notes two, four, and six, one, two, three, four, five, and six, they don't share any common notes. So you can't sort of transfer any learning from this chord over to this chord. Um, and they don't appear together in the songs either. So we can switch it up a little bit and move from chord one that's got notes one, three, and five, to chord three, that's got notes three, five, and seven. And to change between them, we play one, three, five, and switch it up to three, five, and seven. They share these two notes, five and seven, uh, sorry, three and five, yeah. One, three, five, three, five, seven. So they've got these common notes, so you're only making one note change to move between them. Um, and we can, continue this across uh, do a sort of cycle of seven different chords and I've notated this for the subscribers the deep dive subscribers so if this was chord three and we moved to chord what's our next chord going to be this is called moving up in thirds so we go to the third of the chord we're on three third of the chord is five so we're going to oh, sorry tumble here chord five shares notes five and seven and adds a two so we lose the three and gain a two. Three, five, and seven, to five, seven, and two. Cool, and you can continue on like that. And this sort of sharing of um, of notes as we're moving up in thirds, it appears in the traditional music six times in a row. Six chords in a row, this happens in our, in our song structure. And this sharing of, chord, uh, of notes across chords creates uh, an opportunity for ambiguity. You can you can play a note that's common to both chords. It's like, oh, which chord are we in? 
Um, and in some instances, I mean, like our first three chords in the whole song structure, four, six, and one, uh, they all share note one in common. So we've got three chords in a row that share a note. So that kind of thing gets exploited in the music. Um, let's have a look at, oh, I'll just show you with my hands one more thing. Um, grab the notation in our Discover and Beer pack. It used to be called Global Ceremony, same pack. Um, we've got first part of the song, chords four, six, one, second part, four, six, two, third part, four, seven, two, last part, five, seven, two. Here, five, seven, two. Five, seven, two. They're jumping up in thirds. And as we go into the beginning of the next cycle, four, six, one. So we've got a whole string of six chords in a row jumping up in thirds. Five, seven, two, four, six, one. So let's start on chord five and have a look at this approach. And, and it sounds beautiful. So if I'm chord five, I want to play five, sevens, and twos in my left hand. Nice. And I want to move to chord seven, don't I? I'm moving up in a third. So I want to go to seven. So I've got sevens, twos, and fours. Nice. So I lost the fives. And I gained the fours. Sounds really nice, doesn't it? We'll do the same moving up from chord seven uh, up to chord two. So I'm going up to two here. Uh, it's got twos, still got the fours, and we're adding sixes. Let's go down to this too, it's more convenient. I'm just going to carry on through the whole thing. I'm, I'm sure you understand it now, uh, but I just want to show you how beautiful it is. And yeah, it's putting something in your hands that's um, practical. It's, and, and also, I'm just going to make a little switch on this exercise, uh, another way in for you to the traditional music. Uh, so we are with twos, two, fours and sixes. And I'll go to chord four. Oh. Oh, no, sorry there. Six. One. Three. Back to five. Seven. If you wanted to, you could uh, lengthen out each section and pop the extra notes from the chord in, in your right hand if you get to a point where, where you want to do that. Um, that means a lot of jumping about up here. Bit of a challenge. So um, here's another idea that's a development on that exercise. What about lingering on each chord um, in our song, project, song progression? So we start with four. And now playing all the whole range of notes. Four. I'm going to go to chord six. So that's sixes, ones, and threes. Oh. Chord one. So we've just done four, six, one. First part of the song. Next up, we're going to do fours, sixes, and twos. So chords four, chord six, and chord two. Chord six coming. I'm going to move to chord two now. Nice. Part three of the song. Four, seven, and two. You ready? Chord four. Next chord is seven. It's just coming. Got two. Now chord five. Seven. Two. And then back home to chord four at the beginning. So loads to think about there, loads of options to practice, complete chords, it's in the download. Subscribers, deep dive subscribers, you guys are amazing. Thank you so much for supporting me to do this and helping me create an income for the um, guys over at Ambira.online. Um, 
are not helping me create an income but helping to increase their income so we can engage more musicians uh, over there as well. Awesome. Thanks so much. Cheers. Good luck.